Hey there, James here with Penner Trailer Sales in Winchester, Tennessee. Today as a coyote dealer, I wanted to put together a video for first time tractor buyers. If you're thinking about getting a tractor, have never had a tractor before, I wanted to talk about some of the things to think about and consider through the process. So one of the first decisions and steps to, to, to walk through is how big of a tractor do you need? Obviously, there's, there's three uh, considerations with uh, tractor size. And the first one, obviously, is budget. You know what your budget is, uh, what you're looking to, 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 to allot towards the tractor purchase. The other considerations are horsepower and size or weight of the tractor. Um, so if you have smaller jobs, maybe you're just looking for a tractor to help with lawn care and yard work, and a smaller tractor like this here sitting beside me, this is the CS series. This is a 25 horsepower tractor, has a little backhoe. You can put a mid-mount mower underneath of it, has a loader on the front. Be very handy for yard work and, and help around the house, as it were. The larger tractor beside me, uh, maybe you're looking to handle hay bales, maybe you're looking for larger bush hogging operations that you need to be able to do. Uh, whatever the job is, that, that obviously is going to have an impact on your decision of how large of a tractor to purchase. Now, in the size of tractor, uh, there's, I like to separate between horsepower and weight. With Coyote, their CS model is 22 to 25 horsepower, so not a lot of spread there. And that's what we have sitting, sitting here beside me. The CK is the next larger tractor frame, and they have a horsepower ratings from 25 horse all the way up to 40 horse. The next larger tractor frame after that is the DK series. The DK has a 45 horsepower to 55 horsepower range, followed by the NX series tractor, which is a, again, a 45 horsepower to a 60 horsepower. After that's the RX for 66 to 70 and the PX for 90 to 110 horsepower. Now I wanna point out that between the DK and the NX tractor, there's an overlap in horsepower range. So the DK again was 45 to 55 and the NX was 45 to 60. Now the difference is there, maybe you're doing a job where you're handling um, hay bales or something and you need a tractor frame size to be able to, to handle that, the weight to be able to pick it up, but you don't need a lot of power. You're not doing uh, jobs with the tractor that require a lot of power, like maybe dragging an implement through the ground uh, or, and so on. So a um, heavier framed tractor lower on the horsepower range works well for you. And maybe someone else has a, has a need where they're looking to maybe maintain food plots and they need to pull a implement through the ground, but they're gonna be going through trails through the woods. So they don't need a large frame tractor, but they do need some more horsepower. So there the DK55 would work well for that. So there's two considerations, power and weight. When you buy a tractor, I like to talk about the weight because the weight keeps you anchored to the ground, gives you traction. Also, if you may be doing bush hogging and you're on a side slope, um, it'll keep you planted so you don't tend to slip down a steep slope as quick. Um, or if you're lifting, you also need weight to be able to lift uh, a hay bale and so on and so forth. So uh, we don't think about it when we buy a vehicle so much. With vehicles, we think power, but in tractors, we also need to think weight because you want weight. Uh, shop around to dealers, check, check various, even within the same brand. Uh, for example, we're a Coyote dealer and we really pride ourselves in being supportive and being a resource for you in the tractor buying process. And then also after and dur during your tractor ownership timeline to be able to be here to support you through your ownership as well. Any issues you may have, any questions uh, that you may have, we look at uh, it as a long-term relationship of, of support and us to be a resource for you. And so you're looking for a dealer that gives you that feel, that you get the sense that they're gonna be there to support you with your product. Transport. Uh, if, you, if you don't have a trailer, if you've not had a tractor before, um, you may need to carry this around. And, and you may not either. If you're only looking to use the tractor on one property, oftentimes your dealer will be able to uh, provide you delivery. And then as far as later on in the life, lifespan of having the tractor, uh, if you need to bring it back to the dealer just for service, uh, they can probably provide transportation for you there as well. And if that's all you need, if you're just gonna be using the tractor in one location, you may not need to be concerned with uh, transportation as far as purchasing a trailer or a truck to tow it with if you don't have it already and so on. But it is something to think about after you have your tractor 
Now how do we carry it around from place to place and so on? Another consideration is if you do have plans to transport your tractor yourself later on, being able to work with your dealer initially to provide transportation for your tractor will allow you to purchase the trailer later on and have less of an upfront purchase price when you purchase the tractor. So buying a tractor is kind of like adding a member to your family. At your farm, at your homestead, at your house, whatever it may be, you have your vehicles, you park them in a certain place, Maybe you have a lawnmower or a ATV or UTV that has its place where it, where it lives and sleeps at night, but now you're gonna have a tractor to put away at night as well. There's consideration, do you wanna have your tractor stored indoors or outdoors? With a cabbed tractor, cabbed tractors can be stored outdoors. Um, of course, everything enjoys longer longevity and, and continues to look better uh, with age if it's kept indoors naturally, but cab tractors, can acclimate to being, being kept outside better because their, their controls, their user controls, the switches, the gauges, the seat, and so on, is already in an enclosed space, and on the outside is a hood and, and fairly weather-resistant items anyway. With an open station tractor, open station tractors prefer more to be kept at least under a roof. It doesn't need to be enclosed, but if you have a roof to keep the sun off of them and keep the rain off of them, you'll enjoy, again, longer longevity and, a, and, and less weathering, less aging of your tractor over the years. Now again, these tractors are made to sit outside. They have weather resistant controls and so on. So it's not like you'll immediately break your tractor by leaving it outside in the rain by any means. But if you're planning to have this tractor for, for years on end, ideally three, five, 10 years, or, or maybe shorter as you, you grow up in, with tractors and, and, and get larger ones or whatever the case may be. But ideally this tractor should last you many years. And for an open station tractor, again, having a roof over its head is a great thing to think about. Also, there's maintenance considerations. What do we need to do to maintain this tractor over the time that you own it? Fortunately, there's not a lot of specialized equipment that you need. One of the most common periodic maintenance uh, tasks that you'll need to perform is greasing it. As you use the loader or the backhoe, there's pivot points with grease certs that you want to grease occasionally, maybe daily, depending on use. And you'll need a grease gun. You can pick a grease gun up at a local uh, auto parts store in town or various places. The grease guns are pretty easy to come by if you don't already have a grease gun. Then of course you have the engine. You have engine oil uh, to maintain. You have hydraulic fluid. Um, that's not a very frequent change interval, quite a few hours before you'll be required to do a hydraulic oil change. Uh, usually some the, the hydraulic oil is also uh, the same fluid that flows and is held in the transmission. So you have the hydraulic fluid that takes care of the transmission and the hydraulic systems, and then you have the engine oil as well. If you already perform maintenance on a vehicle, you're familiar with it, changing oil in an engine. You have a drain pan, you need a filter, you need a pliers or a wrench to get the filter off. Pretty straightforward process, and that, for the most part, encomp encompasses the maintenance considerations for a tractor while you own it. If you're not familiar or comfortable with doing some of the things I was talking about there, as far as oil changes and so on, you can work with us as a dealer very easily. We can come out and service the tractor for you, either at your place or we can bring it back and service it here at the dealership as well. Um, but again, it's just something to think about, something that you'll need to uh, plan for with tractor ownership. Regardless of where you're at in your tractor purchasing journey, if you have any questions, we'd love if you'd give us a call here at Penner Trailer Sales.